save the planet. This has been the rallying cry for as long as I can remember. But does the planet really need to be saved? It's been here for billions of years. It'll be here for billions more. What it comes down to is saving us. Most of the damage and pollution that we're causing today and creating today comes from what we buy. Two things to remember when buying furniture, textiles, or pretty much anything else that you might buy. Human health, environmental health. With human health, with furniture production alone, we use lists of toxic chemicals, foams, plastics, synthetic materials. All of these things are making their way into our homes, into the air we breathe. They're off-gassing, they're vaporizing, and we're breathing them. These chemicals are now known, or becoming known, to cause cancer, respiratory problems, reproduction issues, genetic damage, the list goes on. This is a frightening fact due to the fact that we spend up to 90% of our lives inside, indoors, breathing all of this. The Environmental Protection Agency estimates that the air that we breathe inside is up to 10% more polluted than it is outside. Environmental side. This is a supply chain line of a popular furniture brand uh, bed. So you can see they're taking resources from Africa, Europe, Russia, all points in Asia, shipping it in. Each one of these points, each one of these lines represents fuel usage, pollution, consumption, resource consumption. So they send it into China. They produce it, they make it, they box it, they put it in a container, and they send it around the world to be distrib distributed. It finally ends up in your home where it will off-gas. You'll use it for a few years if you're lucky, months if you're not, before you throw it away. In this country alone, we throw away eight and a half million tons of furniture annually. It's about one and one-third of the Great Pyramid every year, just furniture. This is just a brief look at furniture. Um, this applies to basically everything that we buy. This is actually a supply line, su supply line of uh, popular brands macaroni and cheese. That little box in your cupboard is being shipped in from three points in China and Asia, a point in Europe, and all over the United States, just for that box of macaroni and cheese. And again, let me remind you, each one of these points and lines equals consumption fuel usage, pollution. This image, unfortunately, hasn't been altered in any way. Uh, they're finding these birds now um, in numbers in the islands in the Pacific. You can see where the uh, plastic water bottle caps are ending up, disposable lighters, every other little bit of plastic that we may use. Our oceans have become so polluted and, and so congested with plastic and garbage that the animal, fish, birds, they're all mistaking it for food. This is an alarming issue for all of us. Unfortunately, this is only the beginning. Up until now, a very small percentage of the world's population has been consuming large percentages of its resources. That's about to change. Countries Brazil, China, India, they've emerged. And with it, their economies, their middle classes, and their buying power. When a buying power emerges, consumption rates increase. We cannot keep up currently. We will not be able to keep up in 20 years with the rest of the world joining us. So how do we change? What do we do? One of the most important things to me is to take a look back. Our grandparents and great-grandparents didn't consume like this. Uh, they weren't part of a throwaway society. It's a fairly new concept. It's a fairly new thing. What we today think of as 
pioneering green or in, we're, you know, we're making environmental strides, they thought of as common sense. They bought smarter, they used longer, they used things multiple times, they used local materials. We need to take a look back, reconnect with common sense, and then move forward. Companies today need to design and manufacture smarter, smarter products, better materials, better material usage, and no toxic chemicals. It has been done before. One of my favorite stories is of Henry Ford. When he was uh, getting ready to paint all of his Model Ts uh, in Detroit in the early 1900s, he used linseed oil from local crops and chimney suit from the factories in Detroit. Mix those two things together, apply it to metal, jet black Model Ts. Now, I'm not saying that that's the best idea, the best solution for us today, but what I am saying is that it's inspiring, it's innovative. We need to start thinking like that again. We need to go back and start using what's around us, come up with ideas and solutions that are better than what we have now. Um, another great thing that we need to use is technology. It's everywhere. Everybody has it. Everyone has access to it. Almost everyone. Good Guide is one of my favorite sites. Um, they take and rank about 50,000 products. Household products, toys, uh, you name it. It's on there or they're putting it on there. They rank them in three categories. Human health, environmental health, and social responsibility. They have an iPhone app now where you can scan a barcode in the store and it'll pull up the ranking for you. It's huge. It's free. Let's use it. Source map. I've used uh, a couple of images of source map tonight. Uh, supply chains. This MIT's Media Labs uh, are putting together all of these supply lines to show us what's going into the products that we're buying. What's going into the furniture that we're buying? What's going into that box of macaroni and cheese? How many times are we shipping it around the world before it ends up into our homes? Changing all this may seem a little bit frightening, maybe a little overwhelming, possibly. But the one thing that we need to remember, the one thing that we need to get excited about is that this is one of those points in history. This is one of those times in our lives where the power of one person, one person's decision has an effect on all of us. We all have that power.